Now we're going to be looking at the kinetic theory of gases. In kinetic theory, we make a number of assumptions. We assume that the number of molecules in the gas is large and that the average separation between them is large compared with their dimensions. This means they're not colliding too frequently and there's plenty of room for them to move about. We assume that the molecules obey Newton's laws of motion, but as a whole they move randomly. Now there's quite a lot contained within this assumption. Them moving randomly means they're just as likely to be moving in the positive x direction as the negative x direction. And they're just as likely to be moving in the y direction as the x direction. We'll be use, making use of this assumption in some of our derivations later. We assume that the molecules interact only by short range forces during elastic collisions. So we're assuming that forces such as gravity which act over a long range are negligible. Gravity is negligible because it's so small, the mass of these particles is tiny, we can neglect it. We also assume that the molecules make elastic collisions with the walls, so they're not losing kinetic energy when they collide with the walls of the container. And finally, we make the assumption that the gas is a pure substance, or the molecules are identical. So what we're going to do now is we're going to derive an expression for the relationship between temperature and molecular kinetic energy. This will actually provide us with a definition of what temperature is for a gas. The derivation is long, you do not need to be able to reproduce it, but you do need to understand how we get from one step to the next. For this derivation, we're going to assume that we have a cube with a volume d cubed. Each of the sides has a length d. Inside this cube, we're going to put capital N molecules of an ideal gas, and each of these molecules is going to have a mass m naught. Now, we've shown previously that the force is equal to the mass of the particle times the change in velocity over the time for the collision. So we showed that this was equal to 2 m naught Vfx over the time for the collision. Now, for the kinetic theory of gases, we're interested in the average force because we have a lot of molecules here. So if we want the average force for one molecule, instead of dividing by the time for the collision, we're going to be dividing by the time between collisions. For one molecule, we'll have, it'll collide with the wall and there'll be a large force. This is zero. And then it'll travel from one wall to this other wall and back, so it's travelled a distance to, well, that's distance d and it's travelled it twice, so total distance. It will then hit the wall again and collide again, and so this is the force on the one wall. We can see that this, this time between the collisions is the distance over the velocity, so that's 2d over Vxi. And if we want the average force on the wall, we want to spread this force out over this time. So we're going to replace that T for the collisions with the T between collisions, which is the 2D on Vxi. So delta T is equal to 2D on the initial velocity in the x direction. So the average force acting on the wall is 2 m naught Vxi over that time between collisions. So replace this with the 2d on Vxi and we end up with Vxi squared. And so the 2's will cancel out and we're left with the force is equal to m naught Vxi squared on d. Now this was the force for one molecule, but inside our box we have n molecules, so we're going to have to add up the contribution of each of these molecules. Now m naught and d is the same for all molecules, so that's a common factor. So we can pull the m naught and the d out the front. We then need to add up the velocity squared of each of these particles in the x direction. 
So the average velocity squared in the x direction is given by the to take the average of anything we just need to sum up all the values and then divide by the total number of particles or the number of values we're adding. So this is the expression for the average velocity squared in the x direction. The line over the top means average. So we can use this expression to write our total force on the walls as F is equal to m naught on D n Vx squared, taking the average then. Now, so far we've only looked at the x component, but we can say that the total velocity squared is equal to the total velocity in the x direction squared, plus the total velocity in the y direction squared, plus the total velocity in the z direction squared. That's just Pythagoras' theorem. The average values are related by the same formula. If we take the average of each of these values, it, it will be the same. So the average velocity squared is equal to the average velocity in the x direction squared plus the average velocity in the y direction squared plus the average velocity in the z direction squared. When we were introducing kinetic theory, we said that we would make the assumption that the particles were moving randomly, which means they're just as likely to be moving in the x, y, and z direction, which means vx squared should be equal to vy squared and also to vz squared. So what we can do is we can replace the vy squared and the vz squared in that equation down the bottom of the last slide with vx squared. So we're adding three lots of vx squared. So the average velocity squared is equal to three times the average velocity in the x direction squared. This is useful because in our formula we had the average velocity in the x direction. So we should now be able to replace that with just the average velocity squared. So we've now got, we're replacing vx squared with v squared on 3, so that's where this 3 comes from. This 3 is effectively coming about because of the three dimensions, because we've got an x, a y, and a z dimension. So it's 1 third n m naught v squared on d. Okay, now we can calculate the pressure. We know that pressure is equal to force over area, and we were imagining a cube, so the area of the cube is d squared. So we've got 1 on 3 n m naught v squared over d cubed, which is 1 third n on v m naught v squared. With this, we're taking the average of the v squared. Now we can relate this to the kinetic energy of molecules. Kinetic energy is given by a half mv squared, so we need to put a factor of a half in here. If we want to write a half there, we'll need to put a 2 up here so that we're not changing the total expression. So we can write p is equal to 2 thirds n on v times a half m naught v squared, and this term here is the average kinetic energy of the molecule. This is also Boyle's law because we've now got P is inversely proportional to V. So we've derived that from the microscopic properties and we've got our constant here. The constant includes the kinetic energy of the gas. Now what we were trying to do was to get a relationship between temperature. So to do that we can relate this equation that we've just derived with the ideal gas law. And so equating these, we can see that nKBT is going to be 2 thirds n times a half m naught v squared. Then the n's will cancel out, and rearranging to get t, we finally got what we wanted. 2 on 3 kB times a half m naught v squared, where this is the kinetic energy of the gas. So this is actually our definition for temperature of a gas. Temperature of a gas is given by 2 on 3 kB times the average kinetic energy of the particles that make up the gas.